Hey, 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 it's Shop Talk, baby. This is the show where it's okay to be you. We're talking from Yale to jail and from the church house to the pit house. Nothing's excluded on Shop Talk. So if you don't have a phone, I suggest you borrow one. Call in and voice your opinion live every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Yeah, that's right, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Don't forget to Shop Talk with your girl, because right here, oh, we keep it real. I could not wait until today to do the show. Now, why would that be? (laughs) Now, let's see. Why would that be, my lovely people? Welcome to Shop Talk. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Saturday, the game of the year, which is the Steelers. Wait. Is it the Browns versus the Steelers or the Steelers versus the Browns? It's it's the Browns versus the Steelers. Oh, it's the Browns versus the Steelers. Okay. I think it's the, the Cleveland Stadium. I think they play. I think it's a Cleveland game. It's a Cleveland game. Okay, so it's the Browns versus the Steelers. Now, if you don't know, our shop talk crew is two Steelers against a brownie. So right. we're sitting there, we're ready to get the show started, but the brownie, the brownie ain't ready. I'm like, where is the brownie? Where is the brownie? Is, is he scared? Is the, game? the game tomorrow, ain't it? The game is tomorrow, but you know, shop talk is on Saturday, so we got to get it in. All right. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, we got to talk mess first. Yes, we got to talk to trash. I said, well, what's going on? Because he's usually like right there, first one on. So what's, this is what... I mean, what's going on is that the Browns is favored by three and a half points. Oh, are they? So that okay. Yeah. So that's what you going with. All right, Nick, what you going with? He said the Browns favored by three three and a half points. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Nick. It's gonna be a tight game, but I think we go tight. Top that. <laughs> you said Browns favored by three and a half. I say Steelers favored by seven. That's what I was saying. We I'm saying, look, look, I'm saying that all the analysts is saying giving Cleveland is saying that Cleveland is going to win by three and a half points. So, are you Which saying that I'm think, not an analyst? <laughs> I'm, what I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. Based off of how Cleveland has been playing and and who they played versus who Dallas, I mean, who um Pittsburgh has played and how they won. I think Cleveland could win by 10 points. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. I say still is by seven. You say Cleveland by 10. Huh? Based off of the the history of the game, besides that one tie that we had last season or the season before, we got you by a touchdown. Oh, y'all think? Okay. All right. That's what I think. Would you you put your lip gloss on, Nick? Yes, ma'am. I heard that. <laughs> I have to get this lip gloss popping for this one. Lip gloss popping. Hey, listen, let's just jump right into it. I know y'all tired of the politics. Y'all know I call it politics because it's always something behind it. But this one right here, this is silly. Andy Cohen made a joke on Twitter. And Nick, you want to tell the people who Andy Cohen is? Yes, for those that don't know, Andy Cohen is the one who actually... Uh, produces the all of the Real Housewives shows. All right. So and what he posted... He show listen, after, listen, listen, listen. We're going to talk about it. We just need to know, let the people know what he does. He hosts, yes, just sir. like he said, he produces and hosts the Real Housewives trans, um, franchise. But he did a Twitter this morning and he was being sarcastic and he said that he was not voting for Hunter Biden and Hillary. And it was a joke. He cleared it up. He said, oh, I forgot uh, Twitter doesn't read sarcasm. So there were a lot of people that were like, well, wait a minute. What do you mean? You know, Andy, some, you know, some people won't get the joke. Some people feel like, okay, thinking that you're voting for Trump now. So I had to clear that up. Now, please tell me, why do you think it's important for people to share who they're voting for and why do we have private booths 
to keep it private if we want people to share who they're voting for. Exactly. I don't understand that one either. Rugo, what's your thoughts on that? Well, the thing is, is that you want, they want certain people, certain people share their votes because they're trying to persuade other people to vote for that candidate. You know what I mean? Okay. But, you know, when you have the people who say, hey, I'm undecided, usually those people know who they vote for. They probably just don't want to say anything. I would, I would assume, um, you know, either you're for, either, I don't know, when people say they're undecided, I can see if it's two candidates, like, that's fresh out and you kind of see what they've done. But when you have people with, with the one person that's already been president, you've seen what they've done over four years and, and all the other stuff prior to that, then you have another person who is as well uh, versed and involved in politics as Joe Biden. You know, I mean, you just, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know how that's a last minute decision. You know, I don't see how that's a, a game day decision if they play or not. You know what I mean? That's not, you know, you kind of know. I would assume anyway. Okay. Kind of like how people are talking about Ice Cube. Ooh, child. Yeah, Ice Cube yeah, and the yeah, backlash. I, I, Go ahead. Yeah. No, I heard about that. But I didn't see it myself. But um, what I, originally, he was getting a lot of, um, he was really anti-Trump. Mm-hmm. And then, like he, what he wrote, he wrote, he he posted something that said like he had a plan for something, and the, and and the Republicans had put more interest in it than the Democrats. Yeah, that's what he said. He um went to the Democrats and they shot him down. So, but Trump didn't. Trump know what he doing. The same thing with Steve Harvey. Make all the promises, and yeah, we gonna sit down and make a plan, do this, do that, and he didn't do none of that. Mm-hmm. That he said he would do with Steve Harvey. But um, I did catch a little bit of the online interview with Roland Martin. And, you know, people was ripping him a new one in the, in the comment section. Uh, but, you know, he tried to explain why. And he said that is why he went to Trump, because Trump is the one. It's not that he's for Trump. You know, he's more or less for the, his people trying to get a plan together for the administration because, of what's going on with black people, period. Um, I kind of commend him a little bit for that, but baby, you you went to the wrong team. And I kind of think the Democrats shot him down for right now because, for one, I, I mean, you can go and make a plan, but you got to make a plan if, if, if you know you for sure, for sure know you're going to win. So they probably didn't want to talk to him right now until after the election if they win. Now, if they win, I could see them reaching out to him. But yeah, it was kind of premature and he really should have waited until after the election. But I think I know why he went to try to do it ahead of time because he, you know, that was going to help. Or the Democrats said they're going to do this and that. And so, so I, you know, but that's Okay, let's me. do this. L- let's do this because this is y- your views and your thoughts, which is totally cool right here because it's okay to be you. Um, we know what happened to Chrisette Michelle. She, uh, Trump wanted her to sing at the inauguration. She went to go do it. They shut her down. His, you know, her career pretty much they said plummeted because the people choose for who they want to support. Okay. Um, we know Steve Harvey, thank God his bounce back was cool. You know what I mean? His bounce back game. Cause before people was feeling some type of way with Steve Harvey, what you got to say, Rugal? Steve Harvey's was a little bit different, though. He went to the he he spoke, he spoke with the guy after he became president. Right, right. You know, it wasn't like he right. it wasn't like he was saying like this guy is giving us more leeway. You know, he was like, hey, but if Chris the guy's Ed- president, we need to see what we can do with the guy. Right now, Chris Ed- Michelle, same thing. It was his inauguration, and then they well, just that's thought- different. That's but, different. She's what? a part of celebrating this guy getting into the office, <laughs> who was a, who was a misogynist. Who, who clearly had racial te- uh, racist tendencies at the time, you know, if not have racist tendencies based off his housing, uh, how he, how his, what he did in housing, who was, um, who, who had, all, you know, also, I mean, everything bad about this guy was known at that particular point in time. And she went out there like, hey, is this a job? Well, and, you know, and that job oh, okay. cost you your career. Okay, yeah. now you got Ice Cube who already has his career established. He's like, I don't need nothing from y'all. This is what I want to do. But let's hear from Ice Cube himself. This clip that I'm going to play is off of CNN with Chris Cuomo, okay? 
Let's see. Not my plan. I came up with the contract with Black America. Um, and I didn't want to go work with any campaign. Both campaigns contacted me. Both campaigns wanted to talk to me about the contract with Black America. One campaign said, we love what you have, but let's really dig into it after the election. And one campaign said, we love what you have. Uh, Do you mind talking to us about it? And that's what I did. So I didn't run to nobody, and uh, so that was real misleading to me. Um, well, I didn't say you ran you know, to anybody. I said that you had taken a pivot. Well, you, you you said I ran over to the Trump team instead of the Biden team. That's just not true. Well, uh, when you are working with the me. Trump team instead of the Biden team, and people are giving you heat for it, what do you say to them? Well, I'm willing to work with both teams, but I'm just working with whoever is willing to work with me. So the Trump... Okay, so pretty much what Nick said. So Nick, pretty, pretty much what you said. He said he's willing to work with who's willing to work with him. And he did, uh, to speak to what you were talking about, he did reach out to both of them. And the Democrats said, let's wait until, the, you know, until we become president and then go. And the Republicans said, come on, let me hear you now. Well, that's because they are president right now. So I'm not mad at him. What's your thoughts, Virgo? I just think that the way it was, the way it was um, related to me, it was related to me as Ice Cube is endorsing the Republican, the endorsing Donald Trump for president. Okay, but did you just hear what he said? I heard what he said, but but the but the point is, is that when people saw that, they initially was like, "Well, mate, you know, he's he's supporting Donald Trump for president." Not not. I mean, I hear what he said, but I don't know how many people because I didn't see that. Chris Cuomo interview. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. That, and that's part of the problem is like sometimes people don't hear you able to, they don't hear your, um, how you're trying to clear up something. They just only go off of what they initially heard, you know? But but I still think like what what, what I told the person that told me, I said, well, what, what what's in this plan? We don't know what, it, I mean, and I ain't trying to dog him or nothing like that, but I'm just trying to say like he, he made up a plan. That's That's wonderful. But we don't know what, what that what that plan contains. Okay. You know what I'm going to do for the people, that's a great question. What you can do to listen to the interview with Chris Cuomo is go to, if you have a Facebook, Shop Talk with Mel, that link is on there. It's the CNN link. So feel free to go ahead and check that out. And it'll go into, because it's a pretty lengthy interview. It'll go into details and it'll say what he wanted to do. But listen here, he couldn't really, I'm not speaking for him, but I know me. If I have a plan, I'm not just going to broadcast my plan to everybody. I'm going to keep it quiet because it's my plan. This is what I choose to do. I don't want you to go, how many times have you had an idea and your idea was stolen? Well, I think in this case, if you're going to if you're going to put it out there to these political leaders and everything like that, and then now if you were to put it out there and then say, well, I'm just going to wait and see what happens afterwards. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or what happens, you know, because I want to roll it out. But when you come and you say, I have this plan and this party is more interested than the other party. I mean, obviously, at that point in time, you need to be sharing that plan. So like if like just how like we judging these guys who's running for president. We're like, okay, so what's your plan on the environment? What's your plan on jobs? What's your plan on this? If there is something about, you know, like, I don't know how, then this is the thing that boggles my mind how Trump even got elected because it was just like, oh, it's just going to be great. We're going to do all this stuff. You know, we're just going to be wonderful. Never said anything about how he was going to do anything. It didn't do nothing. Even with the health care piece, when he said, I want to repeal Obamacare because it's horrible. It's the worst cut legislation ever. And it's going to be going to have Trump care and it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. You know, he ain't came out with one health care proposal. Not uh, one. But you know what they bought? They thing. bought they bought the color. They bought the color because when he speaks, he speaks colorful because he loves adjectives. But the, but the point I'm saying is, is that like, I just kind of feel like. If if Ice Cube was gonna go national with the fact that he tried to introduce a plan, my thoughts would at least be like, give a synopsis of what that plan is. Now here's the thing. So, I'm glad you said it. You said it. If he was gonna go national, he didn't go national. They just took that and 
twisted it to and made it work for their advantage. He put it on his Twitter feed. Well, yeah, because he had to answer. He had to he had to give a response. So so tell me if somebody because they was coming at him because you know you had the um the conservatives saying what's that? I'm thirsty. What's that you drinking on? That's colorful. That's, that's orange. Sparkling water. What is it? It's my sparkling water. They ain't endorse us, so we well, don't even want to. Show Wait, gonna say what it was? Me. Okay, because you know colors mean something. That's why we talk. Sparkling water. Oh, okay, because we talk about moods today, moods and colors, and how colors affect okay. your moods. Yes, it is. But it's I want to get over this poetry. Orange drink. Your orange, orange drink. drink. Orange is good. My, my, my Cleveland Brown drink. Because <laughs> I could have got another color or flavor today, but I said, "Well, is, let's be festive." Not only is it the fall. But it's the fall of the Stillers come tomorrow. Oh, man. Where's the sound effects? <laughs> Where is the sound man? The sound man must be asleep. <laughs> but, to, but to get back on topic, so you're trying to say that it was already outed by the party, by the Republicans, that Ice Cube was with them. Yes, they, I, they, used, they used that moment to try to get votes to me. To get but, but no, I'm saying though, who leaked? Who leaked it first? The Ice Cube, because the way I heard it, the way I understand it is that Ice Cube came forth first. No, Ice Cube came speaking to them a while ago. Because remember, if you listen to the clip, or if, you know, if you get time, just go to the Shop Talk with Mail page, and mm-hmm. you'll see where he actually was. This was already put into place. Like this is what I want to do, and just as you said. Nobody heard that part. They see the part, oh, okay, he's meeting with um, Trump. Oh, he's for Trump. People will make an assumption, but he actually spoke to that. So, no, he didn't just put it there. He spoke with Trump because the people that he wanted to speak to, which Nick actually clarified, they said, let's wait until we get in office. I understand that, but he, okay, well, let's wait till we get in office. You want to hear what I have to say? This is what I have to say. You're in office now. That doesn't mean that you'll be in office, but these people pit me and say, wait until I get in office. Okay, well, I'll wait till you get in office and then I'll talk to you about it. These people want to hear what I have to say right now because this is, I want to talk right now. Let me share what I want to do because here's the thing. He's not out of office yet. Maybe he can implement something before he gets out of office. Okay, but we all know he ain't doing that. He 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 won't even put in a uh, he won't even he won't even talk about doing uh, things for the stip for um corona for a corona package until after the election, right? You know, so, so I'm saying like, is do, we, do you think he gonna really implement something early? But but I'm still going back to the question though, who initially told about the meetings with the plans? Somebody in that camp had to leak that. I, now the way I understand it is that Ice Cube said something first. Like nobody okay. would have known until he put it on Twitter. That's how I understood it. Okay, and I can't say that that's not true because I didn't see it. So that's okay. Okay, okay. Look, I mean that, like I, you know that's all you know. I can see if like, but the thing is though too when I because I was going to like to your point. Let's say the Republicans said yes, Ice Cube is now endorsing Donald Trump. Right? Let's say that he's that they said that. There's also been backlash against the Trump camp, uh, a minute campaign about using the images of Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King and, um, and Jesse and, you know, and, um, uh, the baseball player, Robinson, Jackie, Jackie Robinson. Yeah. Those families came out like, what is you doing? <laughs> just, just like, just like, uh, um, what's his name? Um, Cohen, is it? I, I I can't I can't think of his name. He sings this song. He made this song "Hallelujah." Anyway, okay, he's he's, he, he's not a, he's not alive now. But his estate came out because Trump tried to use he used the music, and they said, "Hey, we giving you assistant deceased not to use our music on your camp." And this happened several times to to, to Mr. Trump. Yes. You know how they just started to just go out there and just use some stuff because they know. Stuff people don't want to be associated with them, right? And that's but that was before he became president. So when we talk about Michelle, is it what's her name? Are you talking Chrisette Michelle? Chrisette Michelle, Michelle, yeah. I mean, even when you think about like who, like think about it like this. Nobody, nobody. I can't even think of a white artist who. I, I don't. I don't want this to leave my head. You talk about Leonard Cohen. 
Cohen. Okay, go Leonard ahead. Leonard Cohen, hallelujah. <laughs> but, the, but the point I'm saying is, like, like, Michelle Clissette, I don't know what her what her idea was. I know we going back a little bit with that part of it, but when he first like, got in, but no, I can't think of any other singer who said, "Hey, I'm singing at this white or, or black." Everybody like, turned I, him down. Everybody like turned him down except band. her. They had like a high school marching band or something like that, or or, high, or college band or something, and then you know. I mean, it was ridiculous. Like, you know, so... I know the singer Erica Campbell from Mary Mary, she had some backlash as well yeah. about endorsing Trump um, with her career. But, and, and she, she, Erica Campbell, she, we love Erica Campbell. She gave me a drop. So shout out to you, Erica Campbell. Um, I interviewed, well, kind of not, Chrisette Michelle. And... I think like when she was on that show, it wasn't R and B Divas. It was it was some show that I used to watch a little bit, but you were able to look into the person. And to my understanding, the mom, this was a years ago, the mom was not okay with her doing the show because you were able to see her personality. So and when I had the opportunity to meet her, um, she was cordial, no doubt. I can't say that she wasn't, but she wasn't friendly to people. Like, you know, when I, I saw her, we were in Atlanta at that time and I was watching her. Like I said, she was cordial to me, but the way that she was treating people, it wasn't very friendly, especially when you're in that industry and you're just getting off the ground. The goal is to be likable. Right. So the show showed her not likable. That's probably why her mother didn't want her to do the show because she was coming on and excuse me, coming out, and she was at the Jazz Fest in Cincinnati, too. The girl can sing. I'll, you can't take that away from her. Chrisette, yeah, she sure can. Chrisette Michelle can sing. Shout out to you, uh, Tanya. Tanya used to listen to her all the time. I was like, who is that? And then when she had the opportunity, so you're looking at, okay, I'm an artist, just like uh, Erica Campbell. I'm an artist. My job is to sing. My, you know, Erica Campbell, if you guys don't know, um, she was uh, half of Mary Mary, and she sings gospel. Married to a great producer, Warren. Um, but here's the thing. Do you, when you're dealing with politics, it's almost like, like we do church and state. When you're dealing with politics and entertainment, now it seems like there's a divide in entertainment and politics. And she went to go do a job. She's like, okay, this is a paying gig. This is what I'm going to go do. And I'm going to sing. And her paying gig, like, boom, they was like, your stuff will sit on the shelf, honey, because we are not, you are, if you sing for him, um, we don't like you. Almost like if you have friends. So I'm cool with you guys. And if y'all don't like somebody else, then guess what? Mel don't like them either. And if you like them, then I'm mad at you too. Well, this, this is the thing, though. I, I will not, okay, in this case, you cannot say that it's just a gig. There's always been music, music in every movement, every movement, every, every one. You know, we shall overcome. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we, it's all. You know, there's always been a soundtrack to people's lives, and it's always been tied to political stuff. I mean, uh, you had uh, what was that song by the um, by the uh, people on the hair, such and such as this? To blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah. we just know the beat. Don't know the words. <laughs> I can't, I can't think of the name of the song, but what the point I'm saying is, war, good, good, good God. y'all. You know, you know what I'm saying? Or, right. You know, you know I, I got on my. I'm ready. I'm ready. You see my camouflage? I'm ready for it. Yeah, I see you ready for it. But <laughs> <laughs> the point I'm saying is, is that like you, it, it, you cannot look at those things and just say, well, it was just like so. So basically, she's saying like this: if the Proud Boys hired her to go sing, she'd go and do it. What's what, what, your yeah, and, and that's that's a valid point. What's your cost? You know, and what cost? I mean, think think about it like this. I mean, like the last the last black person I I remember seeing perform for the for the Republican Party was was uh, Michael McKnight. Do you know who that is? Nah, no, that's Brian McKnight. But they said his name. There you go. To the stage. <laughs> I'm like, I was getting ready to say, I don't know Michael McKnight, I know Brian. But, but the point of Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pump the brakes. I'm taking it all the way back. So Brian McKnight sang, and they accidentally 
called him Michael McKnight. Yeah. Did he go out on stage? Because I know I'd have still been sitting there like, who, oh, who? he went out on stage. He went, he went out on stage. But the thing was, at the time, the part you, at the time, it, you could say you could say that you could have that opinion, right? But when you have like when you, I think, and even 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 more so. Okay, when I think about the Mary Mary, I don't know the lady's name for Mary Mary. Erica Campbell. Oh, Erica Campbell, right? When you think about her great music, interview with her. Go ahead. Okay, when you think about her music, though, think about what Trump is trying to say. He's trying to say that the, the Democrats are, are devils and evil and, and and killing kids for blood and all. He's doing all that. He's he's endorsing all that QAnon stuff, right? And so here she is as a gospel singer saying, like, the way people are looking at it, they ain't looking at it like it's a gig. They're looking at it like it's an endorsement. You know, because you already, I mean, like, it, it already has its... It already has its ramifications on how, like, like it's like, is it just a job when this person has said that they've done more than for black people than any other president in the world, but yet called professional black athletes, moms, sons of bitches, because they stood up for black lives. That, I mean, now, just, yeah, I had a problem. I got a problem with anybody calling my mother a bee. And if I'm but, a but, son, but let's go, but let's go even further than that. Let's go. Black, black people, black people up here protesting against people against for for the protesting against brutality, uh, um, uh, every you know, not, social not injustices, all of that, everything, social justice. And he says these are thugs that are rioting and looting, right? You know what I mean? Not, not and it has been proven time and time again during the riots, and what they're doing the looting is. His own kind. Yeah, yeah, but but the, but he ain't making that separation, you know. Of, of course like, not. Of so, course so, not. So you know, I'm just saying, like, like it is so much more to it than just saying. Well, I, and then and then the thing is, if she comes, if she's one of those people, and I never met her, don't know what her political stance is, but I got a feeling that I, we know who she's gonna vote for. But but the point <laughs> the point is is that like, I, like some people are one issue. Um, voters, right? You know, and I just kind of feel like you know that you got to really put the weight on that one issue versus like the rest of everything else. And sometimes people choose that one issue, and then everything else goes to hell in a handbasket. Okay, I have a question for you. If someone, if you were to meet someone, and you found out that they had a different political view than you, are you no longer friends? No, half my friends got a different political view than I do. Ha! <laughs> hey, listen. You know wait, wait. Listen to the tone that you said that in. You you know what tone that was in, right? Yeah, half, half my friends do. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but you know, the thing is, is that like this, I, I had those conversations. Like, a, for example, a conversation came up once talking about, well, we don't really know about climate change. And I said like this, well, let's just look at it like this. Would you eat a fish out the local river? And they was like, of course not, right? Why, why won't you do it? Because it's polluted, right? So, so let's just, let's, just, so did mankind have a, did mankind, that, that like didn't come polluted on its own. It came polluted because it was getting stuff dumped into it. You know what I mean? By man. So did man have a, have, have, a, a role in changing that particular climate, changing that environment. Yeah. So if the if the lakes are polluted, you can do an air quality test in in in, in um, Los Angeles during mid midday traffic and see how bad the smog is. And the, the smog ain't just come there in a cloud. It came there from the cloud. It came from the inches of the car. So so I'm like so if we can acknowledge pollution. Even if you look at the, if you, if you look at the McDonald's, I mean, the, the, let's say the cup that's in the street, that's pollution, that's trash in the street, littering or whatever. So if you can look at those particular issues and see it at that at that micro level when you compare it to everything else, why can't why don't you see that there's a larger impact throughout the whole globe when everybody's doing the wrong thing? Okay, Nick, same question. Do you remember the question? <laughs> Look, we're going to show you remember the question. The if question you, was, do you have friends that you don't have political, that you yeah. have political views with? Yes, I do. Um, and I have a lot of friends who's disassociating themselves with other people that 
are for Trump. You vote for who you vote for. How you treat me is a whole different level. If you still treat me with respect, then I respect your decision just like you respect mine. So, yeah, I have friends that are for Trump, and I'm probably going to get like, oh, you wrong. I would be, but I don't care. As long as they still treat me with some type of respect, I ain't got nothing to do with who they vote for, who they pray to, or nothing else. My relation, my concern is the relationship that me and that person have. Is it respect? If they still respect me and they still loyal to me, I still respect and I'm loyal to them. That don't mean just because they vote for Trump and a lot of our people do that. You vote for Trump, you racist. That's not necessarily true at all. Just because a person votes for Trump don't mean they racist. Now, there have been some things like with people that I grew up with, went to school with, you know, at home, a lot of people are going back and forth. Oh, they, they coming out now. They really coming out. And we grew up with them. We, well, if you grew up with them, you know how they are. Period. Sometimes. Conversation. Sometimes, oh, because it could be masked. Go ahead. I mean, yeah, because I wouldn't really say that. Because, like, when it was kind of funny. Because when it was people I went to school with. And then, like, you know, you graduate, you get older. Facebook comes out. And then you're like, oh. I would have never ever thought that. You know what I mean? You like I would have never thought it, right? But right. then you, you know you start seeing it. Then you start seeing like some of the stuff they start saying and stuff like that. You like, well, that that if that was always you, you didn't show it in person. You know right. what I mean? If, if some, you know, I mean, so I, I I don't you know I don't believe that. Like sometimes people evolve yeah. and they change into different people than who they were. That you know their views are different. The people, you know, the people I grew up with and went to school with. Trust me, it showed even back then. Some uh, of them. Okay, so they was they was for real. You know, you could tell. You could tell just by you know some of the conversation, their demeanor around you, whatever they try. You could tell. I always was that. Well, I was always able to tell. My mother was like that. She was always able to tell. And like she would tell me which people that you know, even my own kind, which people was for me and which one wasn't. And at the time, because I was young, I and my mom we run together. That's my friend. This and that. And as I got older, I got to see what my mom was talking about. She was one of those ones that the gift of foresight, she could tell. And she would pinpoint and tell that ain't your friend, that ain't your friend, that ain't your friend. And we the same skin color, okay? And it came out, she was telling the truth. So yeah, I was always able to tell. So now when I see these same people on Facebook and things that they post or this and that, it don't surprise me because I saw it in them when we were children. Now, I will say, um, when I get on the actual topic of a Republican and a Democrat, um, my cousin, everybody knows her, talking about Tracy Wimbush, as the black Republican. A lot of people didn't know that we were related. Now, we don't talk politics, and I've been calling it politics forever. And I told her, even like with her show, is Tracy and Friends, I definitely give her a plug. And then when I was doing my shop talk, I told her, I was like, I'm steering clear. That's your lane. Steering clear. But right now it's a hot topic. And I don't not love her because she's a Republican. Do I agree with some of the things? Absolutely not. (laughs) You know, and you just kind of just remove yourself like, okay, we're not talking about that. But I have the level of respect there. We have respect for each other. Just because you aren't, you know, on the same political party or they're not paying you or you're not working for them does not mean that I'm not to talk to you. Now, what you were saying, as far as like friends, I'll uh, piggyback on with that on, you know, uh, Nick. Yeah. Your parents usually do. My, my mother used to tell me all the time. She, look, she would tell me what I was thinking. And I'm a firm believer. Think for yourself, make good decisions. That's me. And I'll give my children a choice. If they choose the wrong one, then I'll tell them the right one. You know what I mean? And I am the person that, let me tell you the right one. Now, if I give you, the, if I give you the advice and it doesn't work, then come back to me. I'll bail you out. You know what I mean? But the, um, she would tell me that's not your friend, just like you said, but, but this is how she would say it. She wouldn't say that's not your friend. She'd be like, you don't like them. That was her thing. She's like, you don't like them. I was like, I don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it would be. I love mom. I love her. Right, and I'm like, oh, like even like guys, you know, they're sitting there, like, oh, he killed either. You know, that's my boyfriend. She's like, you don't like him. I was like, oh, okay. And guess what? She was right because like two weeks into it, after after the mask is taken off, don't take your mask off today because of the COVID. She was absolutely right. Nope, I don't like them. Mm-mm. 
I was like, nope, don't like them. And like, even to this day, like as I became an adult, I kind of know who I want to fool with and who I don't. I believe you have choices. And if somebody give me some different vibes off the top, I don't like them. And I'll be like, no, don't like them. And then it'll come out. So it's now almost like she'll sit there and she looks, she, she, oh yeah, I like, she likes everybody for who they are. And I, that's that whole, it's okay to be you. Shout out to my mother. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. It's okay. People aren't going to be what you want them to be. They're not going to have the same views that you have. It's okay to have your view. And it's cool. It's okay to be you. Either I choose to deal with you or I choose not to deal with you, but I have to respect you unless you disrespect me. You know what I mean? Even if somebody disrespects me, that's who they are. They're a disrespectful person. Can I choose to deal with them? Yes, I can choose to deal with them or not deal with them. But you have to accept people for who they are. And just because you don't have the same views, I don't think that it's okay. Just like I was saying with you guys, if it was somebody that didn't particularly care for me, I don't expect y'all not to talk to them or vice versa. You know what I mean? I, I don't. You guys are public figures. It's like, psh, if that's who you're into, do you. They can't come to the house, but I'll be cordial. Would you know? Would you look at that rugal? Don't bring them to my house because, honey, I will be like, ah, no. Go ahead. What you got to say, rugal, while you're shaking your head? No, I was just laughing at what you were saying. That's all. Oh, okay. I'm like, I'm up, I'm up here trying to check out, trying to look at some data, some stuff. Hey, check out the data. So we're talking moods. Have anybody taken you out of, knocked you off your square, changed your mood? Let, let's go, Nick. I think Nick might be really, can really weigh on this one. Has anybody changed your mood? Like you were in a happy mood and then you saw somebody and boom. Mm hmm. Yeah. Give us an example without without saying their name. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's a bunch of them out there like that. <laughs> they they change your mood? Yeah, recently I did. Yeah, celebrating with a, a family member. Okay. And this certain person that used to be in the club came in. And my whole entire demeanor, because I've been promising that. Who? Let me be nice. I, I, but I've been promising that person something, and I ain't seen him in a couple years. And that was the first time I had seen this person in two years, and I, I couldn't because I didn't want to ruin the party. But I'm telling you, my sister was ready. She was like, "What?" I was like, "But you know, it's our baby brother." But she was like, "And we all family. You go, we go." I was like, nope, I'm not going to do that because this is a good celebration. But it changed my mood, and this was a couple weeks ago, changed my mood entirely. I was like, so I had to give myself a pat on the back because it changed my mood, but I was good. What color did you have on that day? White. You had on white. We can, we, we going to go a little deeper when we talk about the colors and how colors can affect your mood. And, and the outcome, okay? So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But you had on white. I, that's a note to self that you had on white. So you said you haven't seen... Let, let, me, let me say this, though. Uh, let me replay this, actually. You haven't seen this person in a couple of years. And then you saw this person and they changed your mood. Yes. Okay. Rugo. I bring on that one. Rugo, you want to speak to that? About about my mood being changed because of uh, because of people or the color I had on the people, the people. Um, you know what? Lately, it's been kind of funny for for me. I've been I've been really going through a test of resilience. Right? Okay. So so I may interact with one person and even even have an interaction where I'm like, well, I think they tried to attack my self esteem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did, did they dare? Did they dare try? You know you know I might have that feeling, right? And then, like, you turn the corner, and then you run into somebody else who is just like, hey, like, not, you know, one of those people, like, your mood can shift with, with certain people. The thing is, is that do you introduce that that mood shift to the next person, right? You know, and so what, what I've seen is that, like, it, it, especially lately, because I, I was making a judgment call on this one area I was in. I was like, man, this this is crazy. I don't know why I'm out here. And then, like, I'm out there again, 
and it's like completely different. Right. And it was this, it made me realize like, oh my God, I slipped into a stereotypical mindset. You know what I mean? And not just seeing that person for who they were. And I kind of put something over that whole area of where I was thinking that like, I really got to get on my P's and Q's because this is, you know, I don't, you know, or I got to prepare myself not to be accepted is more or less what I, you know, what I was feeling at the time. And then like, you run into different people and that, and that, and, and that, that changed my view, my, my mindset on that area, you know? Okay. Yeah. The, um, certain people carry certain energy and it's up to us to allow that energy to take over us. Now, what you were saying, Rugal, as far as like you, your mood change from the energy of one individual, but you didn't carry it to the other. Yes. Which is good. Nick said the energy changed from two years ago. So you're Nick, you're still holding on to something to the way you felt two years ago versus how you feel now. Now I'm going to go ahead with these Q-tips. These Q-tips I want to talk about is um, the color of psychology. You guys, if you get the opportunity, you can read that. Um, yeah, it's Psychology of Colors or something like that. Anyway, I read it. I thought it was interesting and I wanted to introduce it to the show. And it does make sense. Now, here's the deal with the white. I want to give, give it to you now so you don't, you know, sway and be like, oh, wait, what is she talking about? When I ask you what you had on white cleanliness and space. Now, here's the deal. That's why I asked you. I was like, well, what did you have on? Okay, so you separated yourself from the situation because you looked at what was more important because the love that you had for who are, for your brother's party superseded how you felt when that individual came in. Now, does that individual still know? Like, that individual may have stopped. Like, no, I'm done with it. She knows. She knows because her and her dude, every time I like happen to turn around, they were both like this, and then they would do like this, you know, because you know when people talk about you, like, I would feel eyes on me, I would turn around, they would both be staring at me, and one would do like this and say something, and they would look, and the other one, so yeah, that... But listen, <laughs> Nick, I would look at you, too, sideways, and I'd be watching my back, too, because if you told me you was going to whoop my tail the next time you saw me, I need my dude, hey, look out for me, so we're going to be looking to see where you are sitting to make sure I'm safe, Okay. I was still enjoying myself because, you know, it was my big brother 40th and family was there and I didn't want to. And get that's good. But they could have been, so they, they didn't have to be looking at you like they was going to plot against you. They was looking to make sure that you didn't follow through with your threat. Because I know no, if I came to a party. It really wasn't the time and the place. That's why I was like. Good for you. And it don't need to be the time and the place ever. Okay. You need to let it go. <laughs> I got to be real. You got to let it go. All right. I'm going to go over these colors. Okay. We got red. What do you think red is? What, what do you think of when you see red? First word. Go. Firecracker. Okay. Go ahead, Rugo. I, I see those golden arches. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody hungry. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah. So that's it. Excitement. Intensity. So you are right. If you rocking with the red, you already know that person, what you want. That's it. Um, Gray. What do you think of when you see gray? Like. First. Like first. gloomy. And okay. Just, All right. Gloom. Go ahead. Rugo. I, I don't see that. When I see, when I see gray, I think of, um, uniform. Okay. Perfect. Like, 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 no, like, no. Like, perfect. Just stay right there. Cause I need you to answer this. Cause I'm testing y'all. I'm testing this out on y'all. Here you go, gray. Blind. You blend in. Like, it's just like she pretty much said. Like you said, you just like, and timeless. That's gray. All right, the next one. Timeless. Well, t gray is timeless. Think about it. You can take a picture. Yeah. You can take a picture back in the 40s and you can take a picture right now today. And they got on gray. Guess what? That's true. All right. Black. Go, Nick. One word. First word. Come to your mind. Boy. What did you say? Void. Void. Okay, go ahead. You, Rugal. Wow. 
Okay, so wow, that's his. All right, let me tell you what black. Let, let me tell you what black is. Intellect, authority. So your wow is good. I take it. Okay, right. and some they have like sexy, but intellect is sexy. Authority is sexy. Confident is sexy. So we're gonna go with that one. All right, white. Go Nick. White. Uh huh. Heavenly. Okay, go Ruga White. Plain. Okay, space and cleanliness, just as I stated. Yellow, go Ruga. When you see the color yellow, yellow. I just think it smiles. Okay, go ahead, Nick. Yellow. I was going to say happiness. All right, listen. It is hunger, believe it or not, cheery, laughter, and the social light. So we're doing pretty good. Let's go orange. Go ahead, Rugo. Bright. You said bright. Ass whoopings. <laughs> Listen. Ass whooping against the Steelers. Let Come that. On. <laughs> that look, that's his for orange. Here's orange. Happy, like Nick said. Uh, enthusiasm and wealth. So I love your enthusiasm, Rugal. We'll see yeah. what happens on tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Green. Go ahead, Nick. Money. Okay. Go ahead, Rugal. Genius. What'd you say? Genius. Genius. Okay. Green. Tranquility. People notice you, but you're kind of out of the spotlight, but they still notice you. And health. And probably because the green vegetables too, you know, health. Let me see. I have on green today. Do I look healthy? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you look healthy. You do look healthy. Like your skin looks good and everything. Like you've been drinking water. See? <laughs> look at that. Look at that. <laughs> All right, blue. Blue, Rugo. I see. I was going to use tranquility for blue, but I, I'll stick with it. Okay. Blue is tranquility. Yeah, like, Go ahead, Nick. Calm and serene. Okay. Blue is focus, wisdom, loyalty, and truth. That's your blue. Purple. Go ahead, Nick. My favorite color, royalty. Okay. Go ahead. She took the words right out of my mouth. That's Roy where I was going with that. All right. Purple, royalty, spiritual, respect, Mysterious and prosperity. That's your purple. And that purple is and purple and gold and royal colors. That's the colors of our people. All right. Ben. Let's see. Brown. Go. <laughs> Rugo is laughing. Go ahead. Brown, Rugo. I think about that ass will be coming tomorrow. <laughs> Excitement. <laughs> there you go with that brown again. Look, brown and orange. Go ahead, Nick. What you, what you got for brown? No, say no. That black and yellow terror that whoop up on that behind. Uh, okay, go ahead. What you got for uh brown, Nick? Brown. First word, go. What comes to mind? You're thinking too hard. Uh, Lord, I can't think. Okay, that's good. That's the answer. Go ahead, Rugal. Brown. What, co what color now? Brown. I, I, I didn't say about brown. Excitement about that ass whoop coming tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what brown is. And it's funny that Nick said that. She said she can't think about it. She can't think. Here's Brown. Non-threatening. <laughs> For your excitement, Rugal. Okay. Non-threatening, comfort, friendship, and stability. Now, I want you to think about people that actually wear brown, like taupe, you know, stuff. And, and I go with the clothes because that's easier for me. Um, so you deal with those colors. Right. So if you meet somebody with those colors, are you more apt to approach that person? And feel like they'll be you'll be welcomed. I would think, yes. I don't care what color you got on. If I feel like you, you were welcome the person, I'm going to talk to you. Okay. I'm not, go I'm, I'm not going to readily approach somebody in red. Hmm. I, 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 me personally, I'm not just, I have to learn the person and kind of watch them for a little bit, but I'm not just going to go up to somebody and ask them their advice. 
But like, oh, um, no, yeah, I, I, or, or I, directions, you know what I mean? Or directions, but like, Hey, do you know how to get, right? I, I have a preconceived motion. And I guess society has put it in. If you have on red, because we already know intensity, but personally, somebody has on red, I'm less likely to go and ask them for directions or anything. Somebody with brown, I'll probably like calming, inviting. I'll probably go over and be like, hey, do you know uh, where so-and-so is? And I feel as though that I'll be received. Oh, so you ain't really lost then if you need to, because if, if I need directions, <laughs> I'm saying they ain't naked. Right? You don't care what they got on, you ask them. I'm saying they ain't naked and they ain't got on no hood. I'm yeah. <laughs> You know right. what about. I know just what you're talking about. Or a bandana with the dog on red. Yeah, I just you know what that means. Uh, See, y'all crazy. All right, what about pink? Pink is the last color. First thing you bubbly. think. What you said, bubbly? Okay, go ahead, Rugo. Pink. Uh, soothing. Soothing. Very good. Pink is gentle. Very good. Y'all did pretty good. So I guess their look, their research and their statistics are accurate. Colors, well, but would, colors can colors can affect your mood, even when you see them. That's why if you're feeling a certain way, you're like, okay, boom. You know, even even when you see somebody else with that color on, or if you have that color on, and you feel like you want your mood to change, if you look at certain colors, it'll change your mood. So you guys check that out. The color of psychology. That stuff is legit. Now y'all be looking at people with their clothes and seeing like what they uh, have on. Be like, have me at work and like analyzing people like. And listen, <laughs> and we wear those different colors every day, but watch the mood change. When you put on yellow, it's like, whoo, I'm ready. Hey, how you doing? The social light. Let's just do it. You know what I'm saying? And if you put on that black with that yellow authority, intellect, you like, whoa, be. let's see what happened tomorrow at one o'clock. Exactly. <laughs> always bet on, you know what they say, always bet on black. There Ooh. you go. Always bet on black. And then let's look at that orange. That orange is happiness, enthusiasm. They're excited. And let's look at that brown. Excited, hey, hey, excited and non-threatening. Because brown is non-threatening. <laughs> He's shaking his head, look, Mr. Brown look saying. Look at, that, look at that black and yellow. In the void and this 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 <laughs> happy for no reason. In the void. Always happy. Always no happy. So I, I wanted to read. I had to huh? get <laughs> I had to get that in as far as for the um for your mood. And you have to not allow people to change your mood. So I'm glad Rugal said. You know, once he had that mood and then he didn't force that mood or transfer that mood to the next person and knowing the difference and realizing who's carrying that bad energy. Because if now we know, well, and I'm going to speak of the workplace because most of us are working, you know, are employed. We know that one person can come in and they can have a bad attitude all the time, but it's up to us to say, you will not give it to me. And that's like a. Like if somebody wants to come and bark and, and I call those the barkers, either your chihuahua or Doberman, Doberman bark. People want to come in because they having a bad attitude and they want to just throw that energy on you. No, you can't throw that energy on me. I will not allow it. But you're able, some people are able to put that energy on other people. And then that's when they say that they're being bullied because they're accepting that energy. No, let me stand tall. And guess what? I'm not going to raise like you. I'm not going to raise my voice like you. You are not going to bring me into your mess. You know what I'm saying? So I want to talk about this, which I know that um, with Nick real quick. And then Rugal, we're going to get ready for your segment in the movie world. But Nick, Real Housewives got, you know, I love my Ratchet TV. I got to watch it periodically. Real Housewives of Potomac, new favorite housewife franchise. Did you see the fight with Monique and Candace? Truth be told, I haven't watched Potomac or Atlanta in a while, so I'm so far out of the loop with with those shows. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to tell you this. There was a fight on the Real Housewives Housewives of Potomac. Not really interested in Atlanta anymore. Love Potomac and. 
the one girl swung, well, actually she touched the other girl's hair and Monique, she touched the Candace's hair, uh, swinging it. Talking about come for me. You know what I mean? It was an, it was an aggressive dialogue that they were having. And then Monique grabbed Candace's hair. And then after Candace, after Monique grabbed Candace's hair, then she twisted it around her hand and snatched Candace to hit the table, her face to hit the table. Then she's on different um, platforms talking about she was the victim. Have you ever allowed, and, and even though Candace does talk a lot, she does talk a lot. When do you think that fight could have been avoided? Even though you didn't. When she went, when she went to go reach across to touch her, to even touch her hair. Thank you. As soon as she even tried, I'd have been like, bah! but she did not And Candace did not. She did not. When Monique grabbed her hair, well, went to go touch it and fling it. First of all, don't touch me. That's exactly. one, because it's getting ready to escalate. Mm -hmm. Actually, it escalated to me. When you go reach and you fling my hair, we going back and forth. That's a problem. But Monique, um, Candace did not respond to that. And then I guess Monique got upset and snatched her hair. But what's so weird, if you get the opportunity, if you like Ratchet TV, uh, Real Housewives of Potomac comes on Sunday nights. Giselle said, Giselle Bryant, she said, that she doesn't want to be around the aggressor, which is Monique, who's grabbing her hair and snatching, you know, grab her hair, snatch the girl down. And people are coming for Giselle because she was married to Jamal Bryant and they're dating again. But that's her, you know, her children, her girl's father. And they were saying as a first lady, um, now she's acting like as a first lady um, that she wouldn't be around her. But would you want to be around someone who responded or allow, you know, who responded that way aggressively? No. And see, I, I, I agreed with Giselle. No, I don't want to be around that person because she's threatened to do things and she actually did it. And to me, it didn't warrant anything because I don't even know what they were arguing over. The Candace girl walked away. And Monique, to me, throughout this season, has been egging her on and wanting to fight and wanting to have an argument. But Monique would just, I mean, but Candace would just leave. And then now you grabbing her. Are you mad that she won't engage you? And so you just grab her. I would be so embarrassed. Now, and these are wives. So, Rugal, I'm just going to ask you, if you found out that your wife got into a fight and she was the aggressor, how would that make you feel in the business world? Did she win? Oh, who knows? Okay. She's saying um, that she did, but being the aggressive I just, regardless. I just kind of feel like, um, was this fight on the show? It, it was It was on the show, but here's the thing. Okay. Here, action, but, camera. No, but here's the thing. Uh, that wasn't actually because they went to court. The girl went to court and pressed charges against her. But here's my thing. If you're at work and you are friends with a guy and the spouses don't get along, and you find out that your spouse was the aggressor and fought an adult, you know, fought another woman as an adult, how would you feel as the husband? You know, I, I, I think the thing is, if, if, if to be honest and true about it, it's really just... Sometimes people do things that they probably shouldn't do. And, and unfortunately, that one second of not having control could lead to something worse, you know, and that, that's pretty much what, I, what I'll take from it. But I'll be honest with you. Anything that happens on those shows always put with an asterisk. OK, because because, you know, it's like did the woman feel that threatened for her life that she quit the show. Um, Actually, that's where they were at that oh, time. She did quit? She was, yeah, they were talking to her the whole nine because she's like. Okay. So she quit. I, it's coming up. It's coming up. But she ain't quit. She's going to be on that show. I, she, I guarantee. She, she probably will. But they took it to court. They did take it to court. Yeah. That's even. I mean, hey, it ain't, it ain't like these shows haven't had court scenes before. I mean, <laughs> think about last week. We was talking about the lady who got beat by her husband and she had the lawyer. She had Phaedra for the lawyer. 
and it got beat. Listen, you know, that now was, you know, let me so, tell you, well, listen, that was funny. You know it was funny because her husband came there with some shorts. He showed me. He came in there with some shorts on right. and no attorney. Who was that? That was Sheree in Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, that was an old show. He got the nerve after the court it was over with and, and he won. He walked out. He turned around and stuck his tongue out above him. I'm like, how mature is that? You a grown ass man. And it was for, was it for child support? Yeah. It was, okay. And and that was a that was a long time ago. Yes, that was a court show that was on there. I don't think that uh, the Real Housewives of Potomac um, was on there because they weren't filming at the time. Because what's happening is, what's shown right now is what happened when they were filming last year. So, yeah. it, it's going to it's gonna come to it. But me personally, I'm going to be honest with you. To see grown women fighting it's not okay with me. I don't even want to be in that environment. I'm like, y'all still fighting? Like, that's what we still doing? No offense, Nikki. But that's that's what I'm like, is that, is that what this, we're seeing? This behind whooping is definitely warranted because she crossed the line. So, she really crossed the line and a lot of people was like told her she was wrong. So yeah. what's wrong with not dealing with the person? Well, I don't. I don't. I stopped dealing with her, but I still promised her that behind. <laughs> I mean, really, really. That, that, that that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's all. I that's probably, what's... I might see her again for several years. Now, maybe a couple more years. I'll be like, man, psh, bye. But other than that, yeah. Have you ever really, really? So you still remember what what it was behind? Yeah, um, and it was something so simple, but things that were said, I mean, and I told people it, it didn't bother me. It bothered me a little bit, but it didn't. Okay. But what was said, yeah, a lot of females took offense to what was said. So, yeah, that it, it's that kind of, I'm going to tear your behind up whenever. Maybe a couple more years, I'll be like, okay, bye. But well, in a couple more years, I won't even be in the area. So, so you're still, so you're still disappointed. Is it safe? Yeah, because okay. what was said crossed the line, and like I said, that it was one of them. Who child I have? If she would have said it right there, honey, she probably would have been in the hospital if we was face to face. It was one of them. Okay. But she, what she did, she did it on Facebook. Oh, okay. Everybody want to go to Facebook and do this, knowing you can't back it up when you see a person. Facebook, that's why a lot of people have problems with Facebook. Facebook ain't nothing but drama, no. It's not Facebook. And I tell people, social media is not the problem. It's the people using social media platform. That's the well, problem. Well, we know that Facebook, but I don't know, because Facebook sure do hear what you say, and then they put an ad up of whatever it is you're talking about. <laughs> but some. <laughs> But someone but is using, look, just, just facts, like you, just, off, uh, just like you off, said, hold on, Nick, wait, 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 just like you said, it's the people using Facebook and the person who actually typed it. I'm sorry. This is just me. I am not going to read you cursing me out. That's just like a letter. Usually people that's locked up. You're not going to cuss me out on a letter. Like I can, I have control of this. I can choose to ball it up and not read it. I could choose to block you on Facebook or social medias. I don't have to deal with this situation. So we have control. And it's like, do I want to engage in it or do I choose not to engage in it? Because if it's going to change your mood, you have control. You have control. Change it and block it. Me. That's it. I didn't see it at first. And who I called like, you? I, a couple with several people. Now called listen. Me, like, now listen, 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 listen to me. Listen, stay focused. People called you to ask you if you saw. Those people are toxic. Those people are toxic. And that's what you have to realize. If if I see something and I know it's going to tick you off and you didn't see it, I'm, I guess what I'm not calling you to say, hey, I'm not calling you to change your mood and say, Okay, did you see this? They did that. I am not calling you to change your mood. If it was meant for you to see, you would see it. 
That's me. Right. I mean, because a couple of people was like, what's going on? What happened? What's it? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And that's when, you know, some people was just like, did you see what she said? Some people was like, what's going on? What's the matter? Okay. Y'all now that's different. I'm like, what what's going about? on? What's going on? And what's the matter is different than, yeah. than did you see? Well, yeah, first of I all, why are you asking me if I, just, if I saw, wait a minute, we can't talk over each other. We can't talk over each other because it bleeps it out. If did you see? If somebody says, did you see? Well, clearly they are make bringing it to your attention for you to get worked up because they already know. So you just can't allow people to change your mood. The other ones, what's going on? It seems like they may be concerned. Right. You're like, I don't know. But you have to be the determining factor of your mood. Um, let me go with this. Uh, Real Housewife of Atlanta, since we're talking about it, it's a controversy going on. Rugal, you're in this one. I'm Cynthia Bailey and Mike Hill tied the knot. They got married. People yeah. people are blaming. Not, they said some people had masks. Some people didn't have masks. She had to shield. Her husband had to shield. They had over 200 people at their wedding. They're saying that she is selfish. What's your thoughts of 200 people being at their wedding? So clearly it was a large enough venue for them to have those people. But what's your thoughts where you have, uh, because even Wendy, Wendy Williams um, said that she was selfish for having her wedding during this time. What's your thoughts on that, Rugal? Because she had to... Go ahead. My thoughts thoughts are always like um, the wedding is more spectacle than necessarily... um, truly tied to the i mean it's it's tied to the union but do you really like how do you have to do it it's up to you how you want to do it right so my thoughts are if 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 it wasn't COVID, would they have had a thousand people there or 500 people probably you know know, but i also believe though too that if i'm invited and i don't feel comfortable i did not i i turned on that invitation okay what's, what's your thoughts nick People are still doing things like there's still trade shows going on. There's still a lot of things going on that bring big crowds. So it's, if, like he said, if you don't feel comfortable don't, being around people, don't go. But if you go, then you make sure you have a mask on for, for your safety. Don't worry about everybody else. You make sure you're safe. And if you don't want to be engaged or close to a person that's not making precautions, then you ain't got to be around that person or you don't have to be go period. It's, all up to you. If you want to go be a part of it, then you go be a part of it. If you don't, it's not a big deal. Why I talk about it? Why I t- call somebody selfish? It's up to you to go or not. Don't go. Right. Now, do you do you agree with them calling her selfish? No. They're they're wrong. That's, that's very wrong. Because yeah, this be- person still wants to celebrate. Why would you call a person selfish? No, she's not selfish because... Like you said, if it wasn't COVID, it would have been a, a, a triple, quadruple that amount of people there. No, it wasn't selfish of her. Okay. They, whoever called them selfish, they're wrong because they had a choice to not go. Okay. Go ahead, Rugo. Well, the, the other thing I, I wanted to state, though, with that whole thing is it, how long ago did they plan it? They planned it before COVID. You know, I mean, I mean so... I mean, not really knowing their pockets, you know, we don't know exactly how much they was in for on that venue that they couldn't probably get a, you know, probably get their money back. Who knows? I, I don't know. Because you know, they like, wanted it 10, 10, 20. She wanted 10, 10, 20. And that was before. I don't know what that means. That was the date. October oh. 10th, 2020. Oh. And yeah, I, I don't, I mean, my, my thoughts are, you know, who, who really, I, 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 I'm finding it really hard to care. I'll tell you that. You know what I mean? But we I just know to... you. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, you know, because not knowing, because there's a lot of things we don't know. I don't know anything about the ventilation of the place. I don't know anything about how it was social distancing and all that other stuff. We don't know about those things. Hey, I don't even know if they gave people Corona tests before they came in the venue. You know, I don't know that. You, kind of absolutely. Right? Candy and Todd was there in the photo that they have. Um, they said that they didn't have a mask, you know. People just talk, but hold on one second. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Candy. Right. I'm Todd. And you're listening to Shop Talk with Mel. 
Hey, you know, I got to give them a shout out. Look, <laughs> Candy, it's hard. So that's how we talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, but we don't know, just like you said, if they had a COVID test prior to, we don't know, which is just speculation. Um, when somebody has an event, you and Nick said it. It's up to that. Uh, Nick actually said this part. It's up to that individual. Do you want to go or do you not want to go? Why should I change my plans? You know, because of COVID. And to me, 200 people, you you have a, a good point there. Because when she got married the first time, it was a lot of people there the with her and Peter. Time. Yeah, this right. is her, this is her second so husband. Know, it would have been at least a thousand people there if it wasn't COVID. So really, she did really good. And they scaled down because... Like you said, was her first wedding? Yeah. So, and between the both of them, they're both celebrities. Yeah, it would have been a lot more people. So, really, she did adhere to COVID because if not, then there would have been at least 1,000, 1,500 people there. If you're, if you are uh, just tuning in, we're talking about the wedding of Cynthia Bailey, supermodel Cynthia Bailey, and sports commentator Mike Hill. Their wedding, 10, 10, 20. Go ahead, the, the, other, the other thing, though, too, is that um, I don't know what state they got married in, because I believe in Ohio, they don't want you to have gatherings over 50 people. So I don't know what, you know, where did they get married at? That would be that would be the thing was like, you know, did she break what they're saying? The rules would be for social distancing, you know, based on the venue. No, no, it's just the other people. Look, it's just us. They care. The, look, the people <laughs> The people on the platforms that care and want to talk about it, but she looks beautiful. She did change different, um, you know, she changed dresses, what, twice. So she had a, I guess that's normal now what people are doing, like a wedding gown and the reception reception. gown. So we already know what Rugal thinks, but the people, the listening audience may not know and might be tuning in for the first time, know uh, what Rugal thinks about changing uh, outfits for each event. What's your thought? <laughs> Go ahead, Rugal. Ridiculous. <laughs> the whole thing is ridiculous. It's dumb. L- L- I mean, I mean I, it, you know, I mean, I, it's great for the people who make dresses. You know what I mean? But I, I don't know. It is like if, if I guess it, it. I guess it depends on how uncomfortable the wedding dress is that you picked. Okay. Right. Because I understand from what I from what I've gathered, like sometimes women will have shoes that don't really fit, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And, and sometimes squeezing is something that's maybe too tight or something like that, or maybe it's too poofy or whatever. I don't know, but it's just it's just one of those trends that start that this happened. You know, before there used to be no white dress at all for weddings. Really. Yeah, no, no purity. Thing, no purity. That was the thing that happened because people wanted to be pe- rich. People said, "Well, hey, back in the day, how 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 do I show my wealth? Oh, when I get married, I wear a white dress because it's impractical. You wear it's a white dress, dress for purity. You're a virgin. You wear a white it's, dress. Oh, uh, no! Look at the history on it. Look at the history on that. I'm telling you. Go ahead. Even, even, even with diamond rings. That that wasn't always the trend. A ring wasn't always the trend. The beers back in the day got on that, and and was like, oh, let's start let's start giving people this. Oh, you got to have this ring, and it means timeless. You know, the diamond ring is timeless, and all that other stuff. A symbol of love. Yeah, a symbol. A symbol. Yeah, I was always I always thought and was taught that women. Who are virgins when they get married? Wear white because that's a symbol, of, like you said, purity. Being a virgin, that you. And then I uh, was always told that if you ain't no virgin or if this is not your first time getting married, you don't have no business wearing white. So yeah, it's like several different ways you can look at it. All right. Well, listen here. According, uh, what am I looking at here? The wedding ring. Let's see. Uh, the wedding ring, the Western traditions of wedding rings can be traced to ancient Rome and Greece and were first associated with the marital don- dowry and later with a promise of fidelity. So that it was a symbol of fidelity. Uh, the modern exchange of rings derived from a custom of Europe in the Middle Ages 
customs of Europe in the Middle Ages as part of Christendom. Ah, I never heard that word, Christendom. So, yes, that's what it was. It actually showed it was a symbol of fidelity, which we already know. Like, okay, they're married. They have that ring on. That means leave them alone. <laughs> but, ah, but we know that means... If you don't want to be tied down, you're like, oh, okay, this is what we'll plan on doing. Uh, what do you have? Well, I was just going to say this about the white wedding dress. A white wedding dress is a traditional, formal, and, and semi-formal wedding, or, uh, wedding originating in Great Britain. The term or, originates from the white uh, color of the wedding dress, which first became popular with Victorian-era elites after Queen Victoria wore a white lace dress at her wedding. Okay. Now, I have something. Let's see. Where is this from? Um, the GIA.edu. Uh, the origin of the wedding rings is a fascinating one. The tradition of exchanging rings dates back to 3,000 years ago, while the first diamond wedding ring was recorded in the will of a widow who passed in 1417, so this goes way back, way, way back, so we don't need a diamond ring, we just need a band and call it a day, yeah, so the bigger the diamond is for who, the wife or the husband, the wife, what's your thoughts on Arugal? It's, um I believe, I believe what, the diamond, I believe that's that's a status thing. I, 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 you know, I'll go back to that. It's like, well, you know, I can afford to invest this much in this thing that, I mean, would, I mean, it's now, it, now things have a different value, right? So you can have a $40,000 ring or whatever, and, you know, it has that value and insured and all that other stuff, right? But I, I just think, though, it's still like, it's still, symbolic of wealth and not necessarily how much a person loves each other because you we just talked about this lady who had her second wedding not to, i don't know why they got divorced from why she got divorced from the first one but the point i'm saying is that like um she got divorced from the first one because they saw some people feel as though that he was there for her money and oh, okay. and it was so bad that this feel? listen the mother and the sister hid the doggone license remember that one nick yeah, they did. So that she couldn't marry him, but she did anyway, and then it ended up being the way that they wanted it to be. Now, you said um, it's a status be. thing. I believe that the wedding ring is for um, is actually for the guy. The um, diamond ring, the size of the diamond is for the guy. Because really? of, a, because of a, stat, a status thing. Because if you walk, l let's be real. If Let's look at it this way. Let's put it this way. If you see a ring, if if a guy is to see a ring, and he look at the size of the diamond. Another guy is going to look up like, oh, okay. And if it's a bunch of married men around, and if somebody got a little ch little chip or a little, I don't know what you want to call it, a little ice chip, they'll look at be like, oh, okay. And it may make the guy feel like, oh, I need to, you know, when all the wives and y'all out on, what is it, couple dating or whatever they call that now, where so many people go out or a lot of married couples go out. And mm -hmm. the size of the diamond says, hey, my man taking care of me. Yeah. That, that's, so, go ahead. Oh, oh, I was going to say this. Uh, according to uh, brides.com, uh, the rise in 1947, the rise of the diamond. In fact, diamond engagement rings didn't become popular until 1947. I should have said engagement rings. That's what I meant in my my statement when the beers the british company that mined diamonds in south africa launched an advertising campaign with the help of hollywood stars and the slogan diamond a diamond is forever diamond engagement rings skyrocketing in popularity the, the diamond they look pretty they look really pretty now well, nick well, said I'm, I'm saying like well it's, it, it, the whole thing is i made a mistake i meant to say engagement ring which is kind of like why? So you don't believe that engagement rings are important? No. Interesting. Why? Like, I mean, either either you with me or you ain't. I don't see how I don't see how that ring. What is it? What is it supposed to do? 
it, it, it doesn't actually it's not the it's not the sim it's not the the symbol of us being married. The band is supposed to be right by by the, For, by your yeah, own it's supposed to be fidelity, now. right? So, so what's the purpose of that? I mean, you know, you know what? I'll tell you like this: the the engagement ring is as about as useless is about as useless as the remember the date card that you mail out. Oh, the, save the date. Yeah, save the date. <laughs> Is is I mean, this send the invitation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good this, point. You know, is this is that is that is that useless? Either you're gonna be there or you ain't. You know. <laughs> but you know what? For a lot of people, though, you um, save the dates, and this is for me, like doing a couple weddings. But save the dates. You send them a, a, like at least two months before you send the actual invitation, which you send out two months before, because a lot of people in the jobs away job, some jobs are now. They may want to come and they may need a certain notice. So that saved the date. Because I know I've been to several people's houses where they have saved the date stuff right on their refrigerator so that they don't forget. So that you can go ahead and make sure you put your time in. Because some jobs are finicky like that. And you, especially if you want a set schedule and you need some days off. They like you need to, this way more in advance. And so, yeah, that's. Basically, why people started doing well, you know, why people started so doing you, save the dates. So you uh, talking to you, Nick? So you think the save the date cards are important? Yeah, be, okay. I mean, especially okay. for a lot of people, like I said, with jo- job wise, and you know how they get their vacations and things like that. Okay, Rubel, go ahead. This, this is what I'm going to say, and with all with all due respect, uh, Nick, I'm not trying, you know, but I'm just going to say this. If I'm saving the date, if I'm telling you about saving the date, in order for me to have that date, if it's two months before the invitation comes out or three months before the invitation comes out, or, you know, or, or whatever, there's one thing that I have to have. There's a couple things that I have to have already known in order for me to tell you to save a certain date. What's one? That's the, that's the venue, right? And then, and then and you might have two venues. You might have a church and you might have a reception hall. Okay. Those are the two venues you need to have done, right? All right. What's two? So essentially, everything else, everything about that wedding is planned by the time that person sends out that invitation. What's two? You to, what's that? What's the second one? I, I said that you might have two venues. You might need a church and you might need a reception hall. Okay. Right? And you might need a caterer if that's an additional thing. But usually reception halls, caterers come together, whatever. But let's say you had to get those three things in order, right? Those are the three things that usually solidify when you're going to have your event. And maybe the preacher would be the fourth, right? If he, if he, you know, whatever. But at that point in time, if I'm sending out that save the date, I already have all that other stuff already done. Because I, mm-hmm. I can't save a date. For something that I don't have everything established don't happen on that certain date. So why am I sending out a save the date when I can just send you the invitation? In three months, wedding before I was out the, you know. So it's so rugal. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of money. It's dumb. <laughs> like I think. Like I. <laughs> I think it's, it's rugal. Rugal. I'm just saying. I just I don't see the value in it when everything else is already prepared. You already get all that prepared. So, like you know, so I don't I don't know how. Like, if anything, it's, I, I just don't understand that. I did, I don't. Okay, Nick said it. She said wedding etiquette. Me personally, right. and this is specifically for people who do and have gone to school for event planning and things like that. There isn't a certain etiquette that is documented in books that they have to study. And that's part of the etiquette. Now, now, now I, wait, 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 wait. Let me add this to the etiquette that this is more important. Rugal. I'm, I'm going to say this. Do not wear red to a wedding. You don't wear white and you don't wear red. Okay. Now that's etiquette. That's wedding etiquette. Um, yes, if I am a wedding planner, I'm going to add to save the date. I'm going to be honest with you. I'll add to save the date because guess what? Cha-ching. That, exactly. That's what it's going to do. It's going to build up my pockets. My bank account is going to increase because I'm going to say you need to do a save the date. Me personally, and I have done weddings, I don't do a save the date. 
because I feel like this, especially you, you want to call, you want to cut costs, but you want to make sure that it's nice. Um, saving a date two months prior, clearly those people know that it's happening. So the way that we used to save the date back in the day is you call people and say, Hey, I'm getting married on this date. Put it on your calendar. Yeah. There's your save the date. Okay. That'll save you some. Um, like again, I agree with Rugal. It is a, it's a money grabber. And it's like, I have to send you a stamp envelope or, or invite. What is this? So I'm paying for a stamp twice and it's to save the date. And I have to pay for the invitation and for you to RSVP. So that's two stamps. When I could well, just, yeah, well, it's a definite money grabber for the person that, that the wedding planner. coordinator that does that. Right. Definitely. So Back in their pockets. Right. So Rugal says no to look, no to the two dresses, no to the save the date. <laughs> Uh, an engagement ring. I like that analogy and the comparison. A wedding, um, the engagement ring is like a save the date. It's like, here it is. Either you're going to be there or you're not. That's a yes or a no. You know, so you would just say, okay, here's the ring. We're engaged. I proposed. And then during the wedding, the wedding band is what's most important. Yeah, I mean, or or you can have such a fancy wedding band because you're there right now. The deal is sealed. I've known a lot of dudes who have got burned because they gave engagement rings and never got them back. <laughs> you know that they never got married, right? You know, and technically it's like that. If I'm engaged, if, let's think about it like this. Should, if, you, if you give an engagement ring, should the man be able to have that ring back once you get to the wedding? <laughs> And just give you the wedding band once it's done. And be like, give me, give me that back. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back in. Yeah, this is. <laughs> yeah. This I'm gonna turn to that back here. in. But yeah. he, here's what's interesting. Like a rental car. Oh, you want? Oh, okay. A rental car, really? A rental, a rental ring. A <laughs> rental car. Give me that back, and then I get you the new car. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Like, let's see how well you took care of this. This car <laughs> is it clean in the inside? You are hilarious. Definitely a male's perspective, but I will say um, when you're dealing with the engagement ring, we're talking engagement, not the wedding ring, the engagement ring, Nick, you are correct Th that you said is for you is for other women because, you know, other women get dressed for other women. Would you agree or disagree? Or do you get dressed for yourself? You get if you're trying to impress people or let somebody know something, yeah, you trying to you gonna be dressed to the lines. Okay, let me let you know, Rugal. Let, let me let you know this secret, Rugal. Uh -huh. When we get dressed, your wife when she's getting dressed to go out, it is not for you. It's uh -huh. for other women, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna break it down because when we look in the middle. In the mirror, tell us I'm looking in the, in the middle. Stand in, in the, the mirror. Yeah. yeah. Hey, because you, you said you're getting dressed up from other people, so they got to be looking in the middle. Right. <laughs> yeah, they want to be in the middle. Make sure that man said you right. Yeah. When you look in the mirror as a female, when you look in the mirror, I ain't even going to lie, because I know I do. I said, I'll be like, oh, that's sweet. I'm stepping in there. I'm going to be the coldest one up in that mug. You yes. have that whole, you have that whole prep talk. you like, watch this. Well, oh, look at them shoes. And when you step in, in the room and everybody look, you going to get somebody legit, a legit sister, whoever, female or male. The men, we really don't take, honestly, let me, let me say this. Thank you for your compliment. That's your job once you get the ring. Okay. Yeah. You look wonderful. Do I look good? Yeah. You look good. Uh-huh. It means nothing. When you walk right. in a room and another female be like, that's sharp. Listen here, chest out like boom. Please, Thanks, sis. Please. <laughs> Isn't it? Then you know it's like, hey, I got the confirmation, the cosign. This yeah. Is, this is the one argument that I was going to say to support what you just said about the women be, getting dressed for other women, and it's always been a cliche thing, right? Is oh, that person has on the same dress as me, <laughs> right? We have on the same dress, and it's so crazy because you can have men have on the same color, maybe even the same style suit or whatever, and nobody, they, you know what they say? Well, that color and trend is in. 
so it's acceptable if men were the same thing. You know what I mean? But a lot of the female does. But not that's what I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. Like when y'all the support being dressed for other women, you know, yeah. Because they want they want to out they want to make sure no one duplicates their look. Here's what's interesting. What's interesting that I don't know that I paid enough attention to men to see if they had on the same suit. No, because we too busy checking out the sister <laughs> next to us to see if her outfit looks better than ours. Boom. I, I, I went to this. I went to this one thing in Columbus, and actually, it was something political, right? But anyway, I went there, and every almost. Let's say there were some men who didn't wear jackets, they didn't wear suits, but th- that was probably like about 10% of the population. The, rather, the other 90 had on a suit or a suit jacket. And out of that 90, probably like 60% had th- that new blue that was out. I was one of them. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did, did you want to go home like, and change your clothes? Yeah, like everybody had on, you know, a lot of people had on blue suits or some or some shade of blue. You know what I mean? But it was more towards the the uh, royal end of the spec. Well, no, not really royal. But yeah, I, I'll, for lack of really not knowing, I'll say royal for now. Okay. All right. Let's move on to this. Hostess Twinkies has a new flavor out. And the flavor is peanut butter and pickle sandwich. I heard that. How... Uh, like, I can't even get the taste together. Now, Rugal, you're a foodie. Is that something that you would try? The peanut a, butter and pickle sandwich Twinkies. The the issue for me would be, like, so uh, when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking that the cream, that the cake is tasting like pickle and the cream is, is peanut butter. I don't that's know. Like, in your mind? That's how it sounds in my head. You know that's how like it like when I when I hear that I would try it, but I don't think I would like I wouldn't go out and buy like a whole pack of them. You know, I go and get like one and be like, "Oh, look at this! Let's Let, try it." You know? Guess what I would do? I would buy for uh, like Sunday school. <laughs> for Sunday school, like, I mean, Halloween is coming up. If you pass, uh, let you them know, try it. Yeah. Let them try for Halloween and then it can be like, mm, yay or nay, to see if they come back to your house throwing Twinkies. Isn't that what supposedly what uh, pregnant women used to crave? Peanut butter, pickles with peanut butter? I thought it was pickles and ice cream. I I, I think it's pickles and a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't think I'm brave enough to try that. I'm not brave enough to try that one. Celery and, and peanut butter go well together. Celery and peanut butter, yes. Yeah. I don't know about a Twinkie and pickles. Celery, celery and pickles don't taste the same, though, sir. I mean, they don't taste the same, but I'm saying, like, I could, for some reason in my head, I can taste it. But I don't know if I would like it in a baked good versus, like, oh, I got a, a pickle chip and I put it in peanut butter. Actually, if I had some peanut butter, that, I would try it right now. That don't even sound appealing at all. I mean, I mean, I could just see the flavors having a nice, like, kind of contrast to it because that peanut butter is going to have more of a savory kind of quality to it, and then you're going to bring in that little, like, bit of like, uh, was it zest? Zest from the pickle. Yeah, that's a good word. Thank you. Um, hey, when y'all tried, y'all let us know how it is next week. Yeah. Okay, check this out. We should all try. We'll all try. Next week we'll try. We'll have it and we'll do it live. We'll do it live to see. Because listen here, Hostess is trying to make a comeback because for a minute they were getting rid of the Twinkie. Remember? Yeah, they did actually did, and they brought it back. They now nah, now nah, they got this so mess. But let's for everybody. let's try it live on the show next week. Hey, listen, I got a question for you, Rugo. If a guy was dating a girl for about three years and they were going in on a rent, he was living with her, they were splitting the rent. And then he found out they were splitting the rent. They were dating, splitting the rent. And he finds out in the third year that she was the owner of the house. How would you feel? (laughs) Well, I mean, her being the owner of the house doesn't mean that she doesn't have a mortgage. Not Well, we know she has that, but he, look, he was heated. He was I don't heated. Know 
He was well, hated. I, mean, I, I mean, the fun. I mean, because would he had not paid her money? That's where I was at. Why yeah. would you be upset that you were with her? I think that's a good thing. I think she did like, good. Well, I think that. I think the thing is that it's a lie by omission. I mean, I don't know if he asked her, like, hey, do you own this house? Or he assumed that she was renting. But the thing was, she knew that she was paying a mortgage and not and not rent. So, you know, why didn't she just tell him the truth? But at the same yeah. time, you know, but at the same time, pay the money anyway, right? No, that's true. But how many people just, and this is for females too. How many people that, how many people spend the night a lot? I'll put it that way. And next thing you know, they're moved in. Like they spend a few nights and the next thing you know, it go three months, go by four months, go by. Nobody actually says, Hey, we're moving together. Well, it happens if you're yeah. moving into a place together. But now if you move into a place, then I would mention, Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, do, I, people don't just go and say, Hey, do you own this house or rent it? Like who does that? Right. But I mean, like there's a scenario there where, well, this is the first thing I would say. I'm making the assumption that both people had their own living space prior to moving into, prior to moving in with each other. Right. Even if one person came over to the other person's space or not, did the other, you know what I mean? I think I think there's a there's an acknowledgement of of like that you get to that point where you're like, well, I'm spending all this money at a place I'm not at, so let's just make it official, and I and one of us stop paying the rent, right? Mm-hmm. I'm listening. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, I mean, so I think there's some notice. I, I just think you have the scenario where, you know, if, if that person didn't have their own place, if one of those people didn't have their own place already in, in already, then it just may seem like they just brought the toothbrush and they brought a pair of drawers, they brought some socks, and now they live in there because they ain't at their mama house no more. <laughs> or or their cousin's house or something. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, I think it's twofold there. You know, was that person a couch surfer prior to moving to your house? I'm going to play both sides of the fiddle. For his side, as far as, like you said, why did they just, they own the house? Why didn't the female just say, you know, I own this house? But, you know, and need, I need help with my mortgage. You living here, you gonna have to kick in with the mortgage. But for the other person, and for the male uh, or whoever, the other side of the the spectrum could be like, well, why am I gonna help you pay half of the mortgage, or half of your mortgage, if my name is not on the deed? So <laughs> it could be kind of sticky. So maybe that's why she didn't tell him that she owned the house because yeah, he yeah. might have been the type of person to be like, I ain't going to help her pay half no more. I'll pay the other bills, but I ain't going to pay half your mortgage because my name ain't on the deed. So it, it, you, who knows why this person didn't reveal the information. We don't know the whole story well, well, how it really went down, but you know, I can see both sides of why. Well, well I, I think like this, this. Why I, she did. I, I think the thing is, is that if he, if he, she owned a house chain the ease of money and then it just benefits whoever owns the property and you have no problem with that but if you give your money and and it goes to help her pay off the mortgage from the bank and it benefits her in the long run. Why wouldn't you be more for that? You know, it's like it wants like you to do well if I'm not doing the same thing. That, that's how I, that, that's how I would look at that. Is that it shouldn't it shouldn't really matter. Like it's more benefit to her if you paying it and she owns a home versus like you paying a third party for the house. I think that that's probably the issue. Maybe he just don't want her to make make a come up. Is that what they say? You try to make a come up on me. I mean, that's how it sound. That's how it sound. But but I think, though, too, though, if neither one of them, if he feels that way and she feels like I can't tell him because I think he'll react this way, then they don't need to be together anyway. Period. And, but how do you come out and say, like, do you rent or do you own? As a right. receiver, as the receiver or the recipient, 
When if somebody says that to you, how do you receive it? But I, I think if we're moving in together, what's the what's the purpose of us moving in together? If see, we're moving see. in together, it should be the purpose of building the life together, right? Right. So if I'm living with you, and and this is your circumstance, why wouldn't I ask that question just to know? what the bearings are, what the situation is. Because guess what? What if I want to make a whole bunch of home improvements to this house and it's a house you rent versus a house you own? Now or that's somebody true. Somebody else should be taking that responsibility to fix it because I'm paying them rent every month versus me just doing this stuff, right? Now you have a you have a valid point there. Or is it going to be if you own it, then it'll be put my name on it. And you just came. You just came up, and you just got here, like yesterday. I think the only time that conversation comes up is when they actually get in the legal aspects of the relationship, and that legality is tied by marriage. Then that's a different conversation at that point in time. But if you just potentially just over there, you pay you pay a rent, and if you you know, like why would I why would I give up half of my house to somebody that hasn't given me their their life you know what i mean like i mean for that marriage Committed. so what happens what happens day one we go in you you get the house my name is on it we break up then i own half of your house now that's I'm true pay, and i only paid a portion of of what it of what it cost over that time period and let's say you had the house for five years and we was together for the you said three you had five years prior to the three that i had right it's, right yeah so now, now I'm entitled to half? No, I don't think so. No, not, especially if I'm not married to you. I agree with you. I agree That's with you thought. on that. Here's here's the thing: when you asked to me, do you rent or do you own? When you gave your um, when you gave some examples, Rugal. Now I understand as far as like home improvements and things like that. And who do we need to call somebody or do I need to go ahead and just do it myself? So that's valid. But to me, asking that question sounds like I should be asked or I'll, the next question will be like, how much do you make an hour? Excuse me, sir. Treat my income like child support. Don't count on it. <laughs> uh, I, I, but but I, I don't think it's in the same category, though, because I mean, like if, if I'm asking you that question, Okay, like maybe, maybe it's a loaded have, question. Like, it's a loaded question. Directly to, first of all, it's like this: if I'm moving in with you and you don't own the property, am I am I helping you break the lease? Maybe the lease <laughs> agreement is only for. I mean, seriously, you know, like sometimes it's like, hey, well, if did, did this guy, did, you know, you got this other person staying here or whatever, did they break the stuff or whatever? Are you are you subleasing my property? That's, that's exactly the issue in itself, and that can break the lease, right? It, it can, yeah, but see, I, you heard what I said. Spend a I night a lot. Spend a night a lot. Uh huh. You all live here because you're not on the lease. Spend a night a lot. Yeah. So if you spend a night enough, and you feel like you need to give half the stuff, and and you already securing your other place too. Then that's a decision you you choose to make because they could also say I mean you can have that person like well I'll pay this particular bill or something that I'm I like thank you but, but you, you have no right. say so here you sir mortgage you know but you don't even know if it's half let, let me be clear you don't know if it's half the mortgage unless uh, some females need to be schooled by me you don't you don't tell all you do is if a person want to come and help you be like here you go boom. Because once you tell them what they're paying, that look, if somebody sit there and they be like, okay, well, I'm going to help you. I'm, I'll pay the electric bill. Then all of a sudden, they get petty. They start turning the lights off. They be like, oh, you watching TV? Well, I'm over here while I pay the electric bill. Click. Because you know people petty like that. Let's turn that off. You know what I mean? I pay the water bill, huh? What? You running that water? You taking a bath again? Hold on. Let's just turn this off at the base or the toilet at the base or whatever. People are petty. I don't deal with people like that, but I'm just saying, you don't say, you don't say anything. If someone wants to help you, let them help you. The answer is if anybody, here's the deal. When men ask, do you need any money? Now, some of them feel as though that I'm just asking, but you shouldn't have to ask your woman if she need any money, because the answer is we always need. Now, if you are that honest person 
that sit there and be like, oh, okay, the benevolent person be like, oh no, I'm all right. I don't, honey, you are not all right when you're sitting there writing out bills. You're not all right. Because when you are comfortable, you don't got to write out no bills. You'll be like, okay, it's there. I know. Boom. Here you go. Let me go ahead and pay it. Because usually when you're writing out bills, you're budgeting. You're looking at your budget. How much am I going to have left? If anybody, anybody you are dating, you don't have to sleep with them. But anybody you're dating, if they ask, do you have some pocket change? The answer is always no. No. That's the answer. No. Rugo, listen. So if you ever sit there and ask the question, see, we don't look, we don't look for you to ask that question. We look for you to just put it down on the table. Here you go. That's some money for your pocket. We appreciate that. Do we pay bills with it? Nine times out of ten, yes. We'll take it. Boom. Some people's like, okay, well, I got you a gift card to get your nails done. Okay, so the gift card mean I can't put it towards something else. I need to go get my nails done. Here you go. You know what I'm saying? But the answer is always no. If somebody asks me how much I make an hour, I have a problem with that. And I'm going to tell you why, because it's a loaded question. Do you have any, um, how much do you make an hour? You are now incorporating my finances with your finances. And it's okay because guys need to do it too, to see how you can make a come up or how we'll, how we can be together and we both win is what the guy end up telling me. This guy end up telling me where if I didn't help you establish those bills, don't count on my money to help you out of your little debt. Because here's my thing. If you want to be with me and if you want to marry me, mine is extra. Mine is not to let me do this and let me do that. No, I'm not. Mm -mm. Take care of me. If you are able to take care of me when you get married, I don't want a roommate. Let's I want a provider. Provide for me. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a there's one thing about bills versus debt. That's a little bit different. But if you if you accumulated these bills, don't accumulate my income with your bills. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, it's like I'm not coming in here talking about I'm paying off your 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 credit card because you bought some dresses eight <laughs> eight eight years ago. I'm not. You know what I mean? That's right. Not my, not, that's not my my thing. Right. But but when I think of a bill, I think of something that's current. You know what I mean? Okay. Nothing, like, nothing like, like if, if I, like, for example, I don't think if I would, I would, I wouldn't have got with a woman and been like, well, how much you owe your student loan debt? You know, because I want to help you out with that. <laughs> I, where that guy at? Where is that guy at? That guy at, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but the point I'm saying is like, I mean, if it's like, you got a good point though about do they start getting petty about the usage and all that kind of stuff. I think my, my, my thought, what, what I've always done is that um, I don't know if I've been, I've been more of a guns person versus butter, you mm-hmm. know, so I might be, you know, if it's something that, I don't know, I just, you know, I just like, hey, well, let me get, like, let's say if I'm always over that person's house and I'm always watching TV or I'm watching Netflix or something like that, right, let's say that, and, they, and I'm watching it, like, I got more shows uh, saved than they got. <laughs> <laughs> then it's more or less my service. So, right. So let me just pay for that. Right. Here's the money for it. Right. You know, or something of that nature. I don't know. All right, go ahead, Nick. What's your thoughts? Do you think that it should be like a roommate type situation or like split everything down the middle or what? Talk, talk to us. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and we're not I mean, talking about your personal situation right now. We're just talking about before yeah, you were married. To be, fair, to be fair across the board, if you just, if you living together, yeah. To be fair with each other, it should be everything should be split down the middle. If okay. you want to give me some extra, then thank you. It's mine, and okay. I'm gonna do with it what I want to do with it. Whether it be a bill that I accumulated eight years ago before we got together, or whether I just want to go buy a new dress right now. If you give me some extra, that's mine to do whatever I want to do with it. Okay, yeah. that's fair. Go ahead, Rugo. But, but I, I guess I guess my thoughts are, I think you got to look at the situation. I think every situation has its own thing, right? For example, if, let's look at it from a sitcom perspective. If y'all good times, then everybody got to pull weight. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> now, yes. if y'all the Je- now, if y'all the Jeffersons, then it might be a good faith effort. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if I got seven dry cleaners in New York City, 
you know, you you might just make a good effort and say, hey, I went and got groceries or something like that. For, you know what I mean? Or, you know, because... Review the Huxtables with the doctor and the lawyer. Yeah. You know they make it bank. Yeah. I mean, and they, and they probably... And the thing is, they probably say, hey, I'll do this and you do that, right? And I, I would imagine... In that oh, you got to call off. Oh, George, you got to call off. I'll go open up one of the cleaners until you get somebody in there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, Yeah. So now, yeah, you're right. Good times. Everybody got to pull their weight. Everybody. I, I, I'm, I'm with that. I am with that. Rugo, what's happening in the movie world? Oh, man, a whole lot of nothing, really. We still in a situation where we don't have a lot of release dates for the big for the bigger motion picture releases. Now, the thing is, is that I told you last week that Wonder Woman is looking at Christmas Day to have that release. And the director, Patty Jenkins, says, hey, we can't put all our eggs in that basket because we don't know what's going to happen. So there's still that uncertainty of when that movie is going to come out or even some other movies. Now, we'll tell you this, since we talked last about uh, coming to America, and I'm saying in the title as it is, because now it's coming the number two America, right? Okay. Coming to America too. So anyway, it was just purchased by uh, Amazon for $125 million. I think it was purchased or, or an agreement. So they're um so they're they're already they already made money before the release so i wonder if it's gonna like i think that's a play because we don't know what's going on right now is how long things run in the theater and when it's saying how long it runs it could be in the theater for months right because they want to try to recoup some money but there's also this piece where They've negotiated, I think, 17 days before something can be put to video or to streaming and that kind of thing. So that deal may be for that streaming of that of coming to America after the theatrical release. So so that that's happening right there. Michael B. Jordan is also uh, wants to, is also producing the Static Shock uh, DC property. Static Shock is an African American hero with the power of electricity. So um, he is uh, doing that. He's a teenager and all that kind of stuff. He's he's not I don't, he's not starring in it. He's producing it, but he may be in it. Who knows? He might be Black Lightning. <clears throat> that would be tight. No, there y'all go. That this this y'all stuff. That would be tight if they had him as Black Lightning as as uh, as Virgil Bruce is a Vir, Virgil Hawkins. A uh, mentor as Static Shock, I can see that. I can see that all day long. Okay. So, so, so that's what's going on. The other thing is, I don't know if y'all been watching Lovecraft Country. No, I haven't. But go ahead. Oh my goodness, y'all missing some of the best TV. I'm okay, sorry. where is that at? Oh my goodness, man! This this episode, the last. Where can episode, we find it at? Well, oh, you can find it on um, HBO. Or, or if you have a handy dandy, uh, un, <laughs> you had a handy dandy fire stick that is jail broke, you can also find it on there. But I ain't telling you to do that. Okay, <laughs> you don't do that kind of stuff. That's just for comedic relief during my segment. What, what's, um, what's the name of that again? <laughs> so, what's so the name? The thing is this last episode. What's the name of it? Lovecraft. Lovecraft. Okay. Lovecraft Country. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. This is it has Juicy Small Lady, it's Juicy Small uh, Small Lady's sister in it, right? And uh, Mr. May, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his first name now. Jonathan Majors is his name. He, I think, is yeah. Um, they star in it. So anyway, this episode focuses on them going back to in time to 1921 to the Tulsa massacre because of where the story goes. Man, it is such a powerful story. I mean, it's and it's and man. I mean, Misha, Misha Green is is man. She's done some incredible work. I'm telling you, she's a uh, she's directed almost every episode except for the last one, and she's been a writer and a showrunner for that particular project. Along with you know, she's got the support of J.J. Abrams and uh, Jordan Peele. And man, they couldn't have backed a better. They couldn't have backed a better person because I mean, the stuff is so good. It's that's all I'm going to tell you about what happened, you know, to whet your appetite to go watch it. Because I mean, 
man. I mean, the whole, the whole, the, the, it's a great series. I can't say enough about it, right? Can't say enough about it. Now, I do have some sad news as well, though. Uh, the Tony uh, the Tony nominated actor Anthony Chisholm he died. He was best known for his work in the Austin. I'm, I'm sorry, August Wilson's uh, Pittsburgh Cycle. You know who August Wilson is fences and all that. Kind okay. Of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was a play he did, but anyway, he, he's, um, he's died. So we want to, you know, give well wishes, uh, best, you know, to, yeah, to his family and all that sort of thing. Now we got birthdays. Margot Kidder. She had a birthday today. She's no longer with us. You know, she was best known for her role as Lois Lane and Superman. Uh, Wood Harris. You all know that name, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's his birthday today. Irene Ryan, do you all know who she is? No. I, she is Granny from the from the uh, Hillbillies. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is her birthday. I don't think she's still around with this, but it's her birthday today. And I'm going to probably I don't know if I really pronounce it. I'm going to say Ala Ala uh, Ali Me. Sound uh, it out. Sound it out. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's um it's A L I M I, Alima. Yeah, but anyway, Ballard is his last name. He's from uh, Sugar Queen, which I've never watched, but I heard some good things about. Eminem's birthday is today. And Marshall Helen, Mathers. Marshall Mathers, Slim Shady himself. You know, he's a good example of, of people paying something just for whatever. But anyway, his big story was. He had his baby mom pay twenty five dollars of child support because of issues, you know, just because you got to pay something. What if he has Maylee? Then he need she need to be paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And um, who else? Do you know Howard E. Rawlings Jr.? No, nah, but he, he sounds was... important with a junior. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the middle initial and the junior, right? And he was important when he came to the show, The Heat of the Night. He was in the show. He was the he was Mr. Tibbs. Okay. Yep. Show. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then there's uh Sharon Lil. Um, she's best known for her work in, in Dream Girls. It was her birthday today. And George Went. He is Norman from Cheers. It was his birthday today. So that's a, that's something pretty nice to say. <laughs> now things that people should be on the look for this week if they're looking for some entertainment to, to check out. One second, can, can I interrupt? I apologize. I know this yeah, is your yeah, segment. Yeah, Since you did the birthdays, we have a shop talk shop talk listener, Pamela Johnson. Happy birthday to you! We definitely right. want to give it up to our people. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Great. Um, All right, go ahead. Star Trek Discovery is on C- CS. I'm sorry, CBS All Access. It's it's doing pretty well. I haven't I haven't watched this season yet, but I've only heard good things about it. And on Netflix, there is e- e- Enola Holmes. This is supposed to be the sister of. Sherlock Holmes, the famous detective. And I see it's a movie. It's all right. You know, it's okay. Nice little watch or something like that. But, you know, there there it is. There's also a documentary on HBO called The Vow. I don't know if you all checked this out or not, but it's about this um, sort of uh, cult that came about because of this guy who he was a businessman something happened kind of funny with him in business but he had a really high iq and so what he started to do was make like a self-help group and from that self-help group that he had going on uh had like millions of people he even met with a dami lala uh, uh, dom jesus my my other phone went off and um dalai lama and and um so basically what ended up happening was it was this circle of women, this group they made where they had women that were involved with the um, the women that were involved with him sexually because of what they they him they tried to make this whole cult thing kind of come about, and it was just like with this upper tier of women, and they were going so far to make these to, to have these women get uh, brands on their um, on their uh, parts on oh. their part. 
Yeah, yeah. Ah. And the, the reason it brought a lot of attention was not just because of that piece, but there was a person named Allison Mack who was also a co-star in the show Smallville who helped him organize that part of that business that was called Docs. It's very interesting. And it, and it, and it kind of focuses on a mother's efforts to try to get her daughter out of it. Sort of like the it's kind of it kind of makes it feel like the um surviving R. Kelly stuff. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, it's interesting. All right. Next up we have Nick and Nick, I just got a question for you. Anything oh. happening on the streets, Nick? Uh yeah. Um I don't know if you read the um seen the articles, read anything about this father? who um, basically murdered his 10-month-old, raped and murdered his 10-month-old baby. So he's in jail now. I, I, I just don't, I can't fathom anyone touching a child, let alone a parent. Right. To me, that's disgusting. He needs to be castrated, but he's in jail right now. I, I you know, go keep up with the story with that one. Also, I guess this just recently happened within the last couple of days. There was um, a, a person that was just arrested because he had a seven-year-old child perform sex acts on him. And namely, you, you know, in front of her whole entire class during the virtual learning. That's how he got caught because the teacher, you know, they called authorities and police went to the house in front of that whole class. Do you know how traumatizing that is for that child and for that whole entire class to see the seven-year-old? Was that a form of discipline? I I don't know. I mean, it doesn't make it okay, but oh my gosh. But he made the seven-year-old girl perform sexual acts on him. Y'all just don't know how bad. I just like with the father and then this one here. Oh, Jesus. I'm telling you, that's just just nasty. Put him under the jail. He need to be castrated. Both of them need to be put to death. I'm sorry. I, death penalty. Because yeah. that's nasty. We're talking about R. Kelly with his fascination with teenagers. But then you have these people here. That's just dis- disgusting. Then another father out in Las Vegas. He and him and I guess the girlfriend got into it. He had the baby, the baby left the house with his one year old, came back to the house. The car door ended up getting locked. It was hot. Baby was in there crying. And this fool, they called the police, but refused to let the police break the window because he didn't want his insurance premiums to go up. So that baby died. Now, you got what, what do you think? What do you think about that, though? Why wouldn't an officer, you have to save a life first. Why, why right. do you think an officer would just allow him not to break the, you know, is it because of what's going on? Like, I don't understand that why the officer didn't just do it anyway. Exactly. That's a why. Protect and serve. Come on now. Are you guys getting, because, I, I, I mean, I don't understand. Are they tying this into Black Lives Matter and just all that other stuff? What's going And are you on? afraid, right? Are you afraid to do it, you know? Right. No, that's a baby. That's a life. You got to save that life. Forget your insurance premiums. If they go up, they go up. So what? You trying to save your baby now. Your baby going to you in jail for what? Because you didn't want to pay an extra cup, uh, extra twenty, thirty dollars or extra hundred dollars on your car insurance. Man, get out of here. You deserve everything you get after this. All three of them. That just don't make no sense to me. That's just that's that's nasty. That is completely nasty. I don't understand it. I don't. Uh, let me say this for the um put this information out there for for people who don't know how many molested girls there are. There are these are the statistics. More than forty two million survivors of sexual abuse in America. Um, the National Association of Adult Survivors of Child Abuse is one in three girls. 
before the age of 18, one in three. Now I looked on, if you look at um, rain.org and that's R-A-I-N-N, they have one in nine girls and one in 53 boys under the age of 18 experience sexual abuse or assault at the hands of an adult. One in nine. So you just put 10 girls, well actually nine, nine girls and pick one. It's sad. And even with the whole, um, with the uh, R. Kelly situation that we're familiar with, and they got him, he in there. They, he thought he was going to get out. Did not work. He said he tried everything. He tried singing. He tried to say he was beat up. Did not work. And if you look at there's um, there's a picture floating around because nobody knew anything about Janet Jackson and Magic Johnson. But I remember when um, Janet Jackson with the movie Poetic Justice, I believe it was, where she was with Tupac and she demanded him get an AIDS test. And that's when people weren't familiar with AIDS and they didn't know before she did the kissing scene. However, you have that controversy where they're like, oh, who the thought? She get, there's a picture of her and Magic Johnson kissing and that's the one who end up with it. And if you look at the age, I want to say that picture was taken. I saw the photo in 1983, which puts her under the age of 18. And he was an adult male kissing her. It clearly it was. um, It, it wasn't um, forced. You know what I mean? It was cons this consensual kiss. But I said, wow, look at Janet. She's doing her thing. Um, Nick, I want you to wrap this up as far as the advice you want to give to people as far as moods. Let's talk about moods. What would you give the listening audience? About what advice? Moods. Moods? Moods. M-O-O-D-S. Today's topic. As far as your mood, and I have to learn this myself, you can't let another person in, and like I said, I speak for myself because I'm a work in progress. Mm -hmm. We cannot let another person, regardless of what friction we have with that person, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but... Say it, girl. Tell us what you learned. We can't let another uh, another person's energy reflect off of us, and, and, and we can't, and trust me, I'm learning, I'm learning. I'm Come on, hurry mind. up, because we got to go. We're running out of time. Let's I'm go. My heart, but please, don't let another person's energy bring yours down. There you go. All right. So today's topic was moods, and today's footnote is what Nick said. You can't allow someone else to project their energy onto you. All right. If you don't like it, if it don't fit, don't force it. If you don't like it, you can control it. And remember, colors can affect your emotions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is our time. I thoroughly enjoyed you as I do each and every single Saturday. Game time tomorrow. This, oh, the Browns versus the Steelers. This is at the Browns Stadium. And y'all already know the Browns better win because they, they know for uh, firing everybody. The ticket holder, everybody, okay? Hey, they better not. They uh, can't win. They uh, can't win, so they might as well get ready to lose jobs. Right. And listen, if you want to support this channel, the information is below. Everything at Shop Talk with Mel. Like us on all socials. We got Nick the Voice of the community. We got Rugo the movie guy to keep us up on what's happening in the movie world. And of course, you got me, Shop Talk with Mel, always ready to shop talk. And listeners, I love you so much for listening and tuning in. And we will definitely give you a birthday shout out, as you know, this today. So again, <laughs> and look, during roll time, hey, the shop talkers, we got you covered. Find you, embrace you. Most importantly, always, always love you. Until next week, people, shop talk.